What's up guys? G Money Poker. We're back at the lodge. We're gonna hop in some PLO today. The game's about to get going. We're gonna go kill some time, play some one two, beat up on the players there, and I'll have some hands for PLO when the game gets going. Alright guys, as we're walking in the door, we're told that a PLO game should get running soon. But there's a seat at the one three table, which we take while we wait. We buy him for the max, which is a thousand. And we mostly fold until we look down at ace-king offsuit in the $6 straddle. There's a raise to 41 from middle position. It's quite a large raise, but we have a strong hand. There's a caller behind, and it folds to us. We're definitely going to 3-bet here with ace-king. We raised a 160, which is about a 4x sizing, and both players call. We head to a flop that comes 10-10-8 rainbow. So our hand doesn't connect with this flop. But given that we're the three better preflop, we could definitely have strong hands. Jacks, queens, kings, aces, to name a few. We could also maybe have some tens in our range. Nine, ten suited, maybe ace, ten suited. We also have smaller pocket pairs. Maybe pocket eights here to make a full house. We're definitely going to want to put in a bet here to try and apply pressure, given that we raised preflop. We want a down bet, given that that's what our strong hands would do on this board. So we bet 150, and only the initial raiser from preflop calls, and we're headed to a turn. The turn comes a 7, which brings a flush draw, but we don't think that's relevant given how this hand's playing out. And we have a decision. Either we could bluff, which would probably be an all-in sizing, given that we have a less than pot size bet remaining. This is probably what we do with aces here, kings, queens, jacks the 10 hands that I mentioned. So we decide that we're gonna go for it. We go all in and our opponent goes deep into the tank. Uh, he's tanking for two minutes and then lets out a big sigh. He says, I think my play was pre-flop. So with this information, we're kind of thinking we're chopping if he were to call. Ultimately, we get some good news and our opponent folds. So we're gonna take down a nice profit our opponent does say that he had ace-king as well. We show the table our bluff, and we rake a nice profit to start the session. All right, we get some good news that the PLO game is now running. We rack up a $400 profit from the 1-3 game, and we look down at ace-ace-jack-10 in the big blind. This is a pretty good hand. If it was double suited, it's actually considered the best starting hand in PLO. So there's a $10 straddle, a $20 straddle, and a caller in the hijack. We now pot to $95. Both straddlers now call, and the initial caller now goes all in for 105. Since this doesn't reopen the pot, all three players call, and we're headed to a flop. The flop comes queen six three rainbow, and on this dry, unconnected flop, aces are going to be the best hand here most of the time. Also, having the queen gives us some backdoor straight potential, and having a club means we have backdoor flush potential. So we bet 125 to apply pressure to our opponents, considering we don't think they're going to hit this board very often. And both opponents with chips left now fold. We're headed to two runouts against the hijack player, and aces are going to be good on both boards, so we're going to win another nice pot to start the day here. A couple of hands later, we look down at King Jack 10 6 with King High Clubs in the cutoff. There's a few callers to us, and we open to 25. The small blind makes the call, and the big blind raises to 75. We have a pretty straightforward call in position against three opponents. It gets back to the small blind, who now goes all in for $120. This bet doesn't reopen the pot, but the big blind's asking a lot of questions to the dealer can he raise? What's the pot? The dealer says he's not allowed to, to raise because the pot's not open. So he ultimately makes the call. We now also make the call, given the pot odds we're getting, but we're definitely putting our opponent on aces here. We're headed to a flop, which comes down tricky. It's ace, queen, seven, rainbow, with one club. So we flop a wrap to Broadway. Any 10, jack, or king is going to give us the nut straight. Any club also gives us a backdoor flush draw. So we have a decent bit of equity in this spot, and our opponent bets small. He only goes $100, and 
We're still putting them on aces, which would give them a set of aces. Uh, it's going to have a lot of equity against our hand, and we're probably an underdog. But given the pot odds that we're given, we're definitely going to make the call. The turn comes down excellent. It's a king, but it brings a heart draw. We do have the nut straight, but if our opponent has aces and hearts, uh, he's going to have a lot of equity in the spot. He might even be beating us with that hand. He ultimately checks it over to us. And I think given the size of the pot, and even if he has aces with hearts, we're still getting the right odds to just go all in here. And we have the nuts. So we bet the pot. Our opponent goes all in for a few dollars more. We call. He says, I think I know what you have, and I think you know what I have. Let's run it twice. So we run it twice. Both runouts come clean. There is one heart. But our opponent shows the ace of spades and the ace of clubs and mucks his other two cards. The small blind now tables jack-10 as well. So we're going to chop the small main pot, but we're going to win a big side pot, and our stack's now up to about $2,000, only a few orbits into the session. In this next hand, we look down at king-8-8-7, eight, eight, single-suited, on the button. There's a few callers over a $10 straddle, and we elect a call, given that this is kind of a middle-strength hand, but given that we're on the button, we think we can play in position and look to hit a hand. We end up going six ways to a flop that comes down eight, five, three with two spades. So we flop top set. There's no straights available. So we have the current nuts and we're going to have excellent equity against any hand that our opponents could have here. Under the gun bets $50 and middle position makes the call. We elect to raise right here to $200. We want to apply pressure given that we have the best equity almost guaranteed in the spot. The under the gun player now folds and the middle position player now makes the call. So we're headed to a turn that comes down the ace of clubs. At first it looks like a blank and in PLO these high cards that don't connect with low card flops typically are blanks but given that it's an ace if our opponent had a hand like ace 2-4 or ace 2-4-6 he would have flopped a pretty strong wrap on the flop. And those wrap hands now make a straight on this card. So we're not loving it, but given that the flush draw misses, we have to make a decision. Our opponent only has about $500 remaining. So we can either go all in or we could check and play a bit passively. I typically don't like that route. If our opponent has it, he has it. And we're drawing to a full house, which is a very good draw to have as backup in case we are beat by 2-4. So we just go all in. Our opponent makes the call. And we head to two runouts. Uh, the first runout comes at two. And the second runout comes at queen. Both are spades. We're not loving it because our opponent could have been on a spade draw. But he ends up tabling 9-9-4-6. Nine, nine, so we had our opponent drawing pretty slim to any 2, 7, or 9. Uh, we're unfortunately going to chop in this spot. But that is PLO sometimes, and we're on to the next hand. Crazy action in this session so far, and it only gets crazier, so definitely stick around. We're ordering DoorDash on our phone, and we're dealt a hand in a bomb pot, so unfortunately we don't get it on video, but definitely want to include it in the vlog here. We look down at Jack Jack 9 7 double suited. We go to boards of 6 of clubs, 5 of hearts, 8 of clubs on the bottom. So we have the nut straight with a Jack High flush redraw. The top board comes Queen of Hearts, Six of Diamonds, Five of Clubs. So we only have a gut shot to an eight and backdoor clubs potentially. The small blind now leads into the field for 120, which is pot. We're not going to want to raise here given our weak equity on the top board, but we're definitely not going anywhere given that we have the nuts and a redraw on the bottom board. So we put in the call. All the other opponents in the hand fold. So we're going heads up to a turn. The bottom board now comes the king of diamonds, meaning we still have the nuts and our redraw. The top board comes the seven of diamonds, which improves us to one pair. This might be relevant, maybe our nine is live, or a seven could give us trips to scoop that board as well. We also have our pair of jacks, so maybe a jack to make a set could help us scoop that board as well. The small blind now bets pot again. Given that we have the nuts, we're only really worried about getting quartered in this hand, but our opponent only has 615 total, and given our jack high flush redraw, we're just going to be all in here. 
So we go all in, our opponent makes the call, and we're headed to two rivers. The bottom river comes the king of spades, which could mean full houses are now possible. The top word, we bink the jack of diamonds, so we make a set, we table our hand, and our opponent shows four, five, six, seven. So he has two pair on the top board and a lower straight on the bottom board. And we're gonna scoop this hand. We're running it up in this session and more action to come. Quick stack update here after the last hand. We're now sitting over $2,800. Let's go. In this next hand, we look down at ace, 10, eight, seven, double suited in the $10 straddle. There's a couple of callers over to the hijack who raises to 55. The small blind calls, the big blind calls. Given that our hand's double suited and connected, and we have the suited ace, we think our hand's strong enough to call and go multi-way here. So we make the call, the limpers fold, and we head to a flop of 10, five, deuce, rainbow. It checks to us, and we could bet here, but given that we only have top pair, top kicker, and no backdoor nut flush draw, we only have a backdoor eight high flush draw, we're gonna check as well. The hijack checks, and we're headed to a turn. The turn now comes the eight of clubs, giving us top two pair. This is a much stronger hand, and given that everyone checked the flop, I think the only opponents that could have sets would be the small blind or the big blind. The big blind now leads for $75, and we don't want to raise here because he does have sets in his range, so we just make the call. The other two opponents call as well, and we're headed to a river. The river now comes the six of hearts, which brings in possible straights. I don't think our hand is going to be strong enough to bet if checked to here. We have more showdown value, and I don't think we get called by worse hands. So the small blind checks, the big blind checks, and we're just going to check it as well. The hijack checks behind. We show our hand, and we're good. We're going to take it down. All players said they were on club draws. And this is something that I see in PLO quite a bit, where uh, multi-way, there's an obvious draw on the board. And when it misses, the opponents all kind of have the same draw. Uh, they're all blocking each other's outs. So this is why we decided to be sticky in this hand. And we're going to take down about a $400 profit with this one. Another quick stack update. We're now up to over $3,300. This next hand is an interesting one by our opponents. And some information we get during this hand is going to become relevant in the very next hand we play. There's a $10 straddle and one caller. We look down at some trash, so we fold it. The button raises to 45. The big blind calls. Both the straddle and the limper call, so they're headed four ways to a flop. The flop comes 2-3-4 with two spades. It checks to the button, who pots it to 185. The big blind now pots it to 740. Both the other opponents fold, and the button pretty much snap calls here. We're headed to a turn, which is the nine of clubs. It looks like a blank, and the big blind now jams for 1505. The button gets a count and snap calls. The river comes the eight of clubs, and the opponents table 9965 by the big blind. So he flopped the nut straight with the straight flush redraw, turn top set, and the button shows ace, ace, seven, two with seven high spades. This is definitely an overplay by the button with aces here. Multi-way, it's unlikely that just a pair of aces will be good at showdown. And his draws weren't necessarily strong enough to continue here. So we want to remember this for later. And let's head into the next hand, which is a crazy one. The action continues in this hand where we look down at queen, jack, ten, seven with jack high spades on the button. There's a $10 straddle and two callers over to us. We pot it to 55. The small blind, who was the player with aces in the last hand, now pots it to 195. It folds around to us, and this is a pretty clear cut call. I even looked up in PLO solver after the session and found that we'd be calling with 92% of our range. All queen jack 10 hands fall squarely in this range. So we call and we're headed to a flop. The flop comes six, seven, eight rainbow. Our opponent now checks. At this point, we're putting him on a range of aces, kings, and rundown hands given that he three bet preflop. We're not gonna wanna bet into that range 
given that we're beat by aces, kings, and a lot of different hands here. So we decide to check it back. The turn brings the 10 of clubs, which gives us two pair. We're now beating aces and kings, but our opponent could have a club draw, let's say a suited ace, a suited king, and feel comfortable betting here to apply pressure with this draw that he turned. He could also still have rundown hands, let's say 7, 8, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, jack, 9, 10, jack, queen. Those hands would all have us beat with a straight, and we're starting to think those are less likely because between our hand and the board, we double block all of those hands. So 6, 7, 8, 9, double blocked by our hand in the board. 8, 9, 10, jack, double blocked by our hand in the board. Same thing with 9, 10, jack, queen. All those hands are blocked by our hand in the board. We're also now suspicious as to why, if he had one of those run on hands and has a straight, wouldn't have bet on the flop. Those hands are going to want protection from the board pairing or backdoor flush draws. So when he bets 400 now, I'm going to call with the two pair and evaluate a river. The river now comes the three of spades. The club draw misses, and because the board didn't pair, we are still beating aces and kings. Our opponent now leads for $875, so this is a pretty big bet. There's 2100 in the pot, and we are contemplating our options. We are deep into the tank. We just saw this guy overplay aces, but we could be beat by any assortment of 9x hands. 5 9, 6 9, 7 9, 8 9, 9 10, 9 jack. Could he have a hand like aces or kings with one of those 9x combos? It's certainly possible, but as I'm thinking back to the fact that he checked the flop, I just can't get past what 9x hands would want to check the flop, except like 6 9, 7 9, 8 9. But I think most of those hands are going to be danglers off his aces or kings not rundown hands which would want to bet the flop so ultimately i decide to be the hero i slide in the yellow one thousand dollar lodge chip i hold my breath and my opponent flips his cards and he says i only have kings so you must be good let's go we sniff it out we call the bluff and we're going to take down a $3,000 pot with some hand reading skills here. We're feeling really good about this one. And our stack is now piles. Let's go. We're now sitting on 4800 after that last hand. And there's more action to come, so stay tuned. In this next hand, we pick up a premium. Ace of spades, ace of diamonds, ten of diamonds, seven of hearts on the button. There's a $10 and $20 straddle on. There's three callers before we pot it to 135. The player in the $10 straddle now goes all in for 175. Both opponents call, and given that this bet doesn't reopen the pot, we also call. If it did reopen the pot, we would definitely pot it back. All players are somewhat short stacked, and we'd love to get it in here with our aces. The flop comes 6-10 queen with two clubs. It checks to the hijack, who now jams for 685. We're not faced with the decision. Our opponent could be on a club draw. He could also have straight draws or wraps. Let's say jack, king, ace, nine, jack, king. Combo draws of clubs and wraps. He could also have sets, sixes, tens, queens. We'd also be doing bad against hands that have one pair and a draw on this board. Let's say a pair of sixes and a straight draw or a pair of tens and a club draw. In those cases, we'd probably have to fade not only the flush outs or the straight outs, but also the two pair outs our opponents could have. Against his full range, I don't think we're getting the right odds to continue, considering we only have a pair of aces. We also have very little backup if we're beat, and we're going to have to fade tons of cards. So we elect to fold. The low jack player is the only player who calls. He only has about $285 in front of him. They head to a run out, and the hijack player did have a pair of 10s, so we were fading two pair outs and flush outs. 
The low jack has king jack, so we were also fading straight outs. So we make the correct lay down here. Let's get into the next hand. In this next hand, we look down at aces again with ace of clubs, ace of hearts, king of spades, four of hearts. There's no straddle on in this hand, and there's two callers to us, and we pot it to 25. There's three callers, and we're headed to a flop in position here, which comes down 275 rainbow. It checks to us, and a pair of aces is very likely to be good on a low card flop like this. So we bet 50, and we get two callers. The turn's really good. It's the three of spades. This gives us a wheel, which is a straight ace through five. Given that this brings in the spade draw, we think our opponents could have picked up equity and want to draw to a flush. Our opponents could also have two pair hands or sets after calling on the flop. So we want to bet for value here. We bet 125, both opponents fold, and we're going to take down another $200 profit in this hand. This next hand, we're in the hijack, and we look down at a super premium. Ace, ace, king, queen, double suited. You love to see it. There's no straddle on in this hand, and there's one caller. We pot it to $20, the cutoff calls, and the limper calls. We're headed three ways to a flop, which comes 10 of spades, 2 of diamonds, 8 of spades. We want to bet here, because our opponents could have flush draws, they could have wrap type hands, a 9 jack queen, jack 9 7, hands like that, that we can charge and get value from. So we bet 40, only the limper and the low jack calls, and we're headed to a turn. The turn comes the 5 of clubs. This doesn't complete any of the draws that we mentioned before, no straights get there, the flush doesn't come in. So we want to continue to bet for the same reason we bet on the flop. We bet 75. The opponent now calls, and we're headed to a river. We see the king of diamonds on the river, and this is where things get dicey. Our opponent now leads for 175. Now this opponent, he's pretty ABC poker player. He doesn't get out of line too much. I think I've only ever seen him bluff maybe two times. So I'm somewhat skeptical that he just randomly decides to bluff here. It really looks like he saw a blank on the river that doesn't complete the flush, doesn't complete any straights, and he's trying to go for value here. So I ultimately decide to fold. I asked the opponent what he had. He said he had a set of deuces. I don't know if I believe him 100%, but I think against this opponent, he probably had it. And we're going to lose this pot. On to the next one. We're wrapping up the session, but we're going to play one more bomb pot before we head out. We look down at ace-king 4-3 with ace-high clubs. We see pretty good flops. Queen of hearts, five of hearts, deuce of clubs on the bottom. This gives us a wrap. Any ace, three, four, or six is going to give us a straight. Ideally, it's not a heart, which would give a flush. The top board brings ace-king 8 with two diamonds. We have a pretty strong hand, but I don't think it's strong enough to bet into the field, considering that our wrap on the bottom isn't to the nuts on all sides. If we had 3, 4, 6, that would be a much better wrap because pretty much every card would give us the nuts. We also have to fade hearts on the bottom and diamonds on the top. So we elect to check. It checks around to the low jack who bets 100. A late position player calls. We call. And a middle position player calls. We're headed four ways to turns. The bottom turns the two of hearts which completes the flush and brings possible full houses. The top comes the four of spades. Our ace-king is going to still be pretty good here. But given that our draw could be dead on the bottom already, we don't want to bet here. We check. It checks to the low jack, who bets 265, which is all in. The cutoff now calls. Given that our draw could be dead on the bottom, and we might have to fade lots of outs, or already could be beat by a set on the top board, we decide to fold here. The middle position player calls, and they're headed to two rivers. The bottom river is the queen of spades, and the top river is the queen of diamonds. It goes check, check. The low jack now announces flush, flush, tables his hand. Both players muck, and he's going to scoop this one. It's a good thing we got out of the way. What's up, guys? Great session today. We made 3400 at the PLO table, 400 at the Hold'em table, 
So we're up 3,800 today. I appreciate everyone who's been liking and subscribing. Helps me out a lot. If you like this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.